Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz and today I want to talk about all of the books that I want to read for December. It's the last month of this year and I'm really excited about this stack. Um, it is a huge stack with a lot of books in it but most of them are really really thin, really short books and the reason I picked so many short books this month was because November honestly was such a bad reading month. You will see that in my reading wrap up. Um, I'm just completely, I mean completely swamped at work. I have so much to do and after work I usually have a lot of social obligations and I just haven't had a lot of time to read and what I've noticed about myself is I get really annoyed when I take, uh, when it takes me a really long time to finish a book, when I never have the time to sink into a story and I sort of transfer this annoyance onto the book, which is not fair, but that's just how it is. And that's why I've decided to pick a lot of short books this month, um, because I don't know if the stress at work is actually gonna ease up a bit, um, but I don't wanna have that feeling of frustration, but I wanna have a couple of quick short reads, but there are also a couple of thicker books in there because I can't help it, I love thick books. <laughs> um, but one of the smaller, thinner ones is um, actually a German title, it's Auf der Place der Diamant. It is by Mercy Rodoreda. It is a Catalanian classic and this um, takes place in Colometta where a young woman who has um, a very humble background um, tries um, to find her way and to find the man that she loves after the Spanish Civil War. And um, it's supposed to be an absolute classic and I personally really love Catalanian literature and that's why I'm excited to dig into this one. The next book is another classic but you might be much more familiar with this one. It's Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Um, this, I've never read anything by Steinbeck and I really think I need to change that. So he's really famous for um, writing books that take great uh, place in the Great Depression and that deal with a lot of poverty um, and that rural poverty which tends to be really extreme poverty. And this book follows two men, um, um, George and Lenny, who find work at a ranch, um, but eventually uh, things turn south. I mean, it's just, it becomes a really bad situation because one of them has anger issues, I think. Um, and it just deals, I think, with what poverty and deprivation does to people. I think that's what it is about. But it's a really short book. It's, it doesn't have even, it has like a hundred pages. So this is gonna be a quick read. The next book is also a really thin book. I've never heard of it, but I once saw it at a book sale. It is Journey's End by R.C. Sheriff. And this takes place in the first, during, uh, in the first World War. Um, we follow a set of young officers who, you know, go through the horrors of the First World War. And one of them, uh, an 18 year old officer called Raleigh, he um, is, uh, has to join um, uh, a besieged company and where he sees his cricketing hero Stan Hope and he sees what the war has done to this man who has dramatically changed. And it just deals with the horrors of what war, uh, especially such a horrible war, does um, to people. So I think this is also going to be a really interesting read uh, and a another really short book. <laughs> the next one is another classic. This is going to be a classic month, but it totally fits my, um, my reading plans because I did want to read more classics this year. So I guess I'm gonna do this at the end of the year. <laughs> uh, the next book is The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. It's this really famous story um, of a man who becomes invisible and he has to like put paste on his skin and wear clothes and um, always wear sunglasses because uh, he's invisible and he sort of has to make himself visible. But the fact that he never, nobody can see him and that he lives such a difficult life turned him into a monster. 
The next one is not a classic. It's quite a new book, but I, it sounds so, so cozy and I'm so excited to read it. It is Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. Uh, it is by Satoshi Yakisawa and is translated by Eric Osawa. And this book is um, takes obviously place at this gorgeous, cute little bookshop. Um, our main protagonist is called Takako. She's 25 years old and her boyfriend has just broken up with her because he's marrying another woman. I mean, that is really harsh and heartbreaking. And so she takes up her, um, her uncle on his offer to live rent free at his bookshop and um, living at that bookshop, working there changes her life for the better. I think this is going to be such a cozy read. I mean, it has books, it has a cat. What more can a girl want, right? <laughs> the next book is the opposite of that. It's really not a cozy book. It is Fix the System, Not the Women by Laura Bates. Um, so this is basically a, uh, um, a collection, I think, of stories by women of um, what has happened to them due to sexism and Laura Bates backs that up by data and facts and it is too often we blame women for walking home alone at night for not demanding a seat at the table for not overcoming the odds that are stacked against them this distracts us from the real problem the failings and biases of a society that was not built for women and that is why it's called Fix the System, Not the Women, which I think is such a good title and really appropriate for what I think needs to happen. I'm very excited to read this. The next one is pretty famous for being a short book and a quick read. <laughs> um, and I've been so excited to read this for quite some time because the cover is just stunning. Um, this is I Who Have Never Known Man by Jacqueline Hartman. So this book is, has a really strange setup. It's 39 women who are locked into a cellar type of situation. None of them can remember how they got here. They're all wa watched by guards and none of them can actually remember. But eventually a 40th um, woman, actually girl, joins them and while she's a bit of an outcast, she might be the key to their survival. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, it is, I think, a really dystopic um, version of events, uh, what can happen to women, um, but I'm excited to read this and this cover is my jam. The next one I'm also excited about because the last two books that I showed you are pretty depressing, so I need something fun. And that is, have I told you this already, Stories I Don't Want to Forget to Remember by Lauren Graham. So Lauren Graham wrote an, um, a memoir called Am I Talking Too Fast or something like that. Um, and I absolutely love this. Uh, I mean, Usually celebrity memoirs are a bit of a hit and miss and more on the miss side than hit and her book was really hilarious, really fun and so I'm really looking forward to this story collection by her. The next read is another non-fiction book. It is Pirate Queen by Judith Cook. This is about the life of Grace O'Malley. She has been a source of fascination for me for decades. I read a book about her when I was a small child and I've been obsessed with pirates basically ever since, especially female pirates. And she has had such a fascinating life. So she was born um, as the daughter of an Irish clan um, ruler, clan chief, sorry, um, was married off at 15, but eventually became a notorious pirate. She was supposed to be hanged um, later on, but Elizabeth the, uh, the first um, pardoned her. So such an amazing story. So excited to read this. Um, I think you can't actually do anything wrong with that source material. And now on to the thicker books. Um, one of them is a little cute rom-com. It is The Flat Share, Beth Beth O'Leary. This is really famous by now um, and I have never read anything by Beth O'Leary, but she is supposed to be this really great, fun, cozy author. And this has a really fun um, uh, setup. So anybody who has ever been to London knows that the rent there is intense. It is really insane. 
and that is why two people who actually don't know each other decide to split the rent and actually share one bedroom apartment because one of them works during the day and the other one works during the night and it's just gonna um, switch um, places. Um, so they share a bed even though they've never met and obviously, I mean, eventually they will meet and I guess they fall in love, but that's just me. Um, and it's supposed to be really fun, really lovely, and I've heard so many good things about this. So this was a fun book. The next book is less so, unfortunately. It is a library copy of Demon Copperhead by Robert King Solver. This is supposed to be really terrific. It was the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction uh, Award in 2023. So this is a huge thing. Um, I always trust that prize. So in this book, we follow Demon Copperhead, who was born into extreme poverty to an alcoholic mother. And from the get-go, he basically knows he wants more from life than this. And we follow his fight for a better life. I read the first couple of pages and it immediately sucks you in. It has such riveting throws and I think this is going to be a really terrific book. The next uh, couple of books are all fantasy books. Um, one of the books that I want to read because I've heard so many lovely things about it uh, is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. She's supposed to be this really amazing YA fantasy author. And um, in this book, we follow a librarian, just like moi, um, <laughs> what's her name? Uh, Elizabeth, um, which happens to be my second name. Um, and she is uh, raised as a foundling in one of Ostermere's great libraries. And there she's taught that all sorcerers are evil and that, they, um, that the books that she is basically watching over um, have the potential for great evil. And um, so she is raised to protect the library and protect them for him from sorcerers. Uh, but one day she's accused of a crime that she didn't commit, but she has to flee and she has to form an alliance with one of the sorcerers, um, obviously a handsome young man. Um, and it's about what actually happens and uncovering the secrets of the fabric of their society, basically, which could unravel everything that she has ever known. So this is the first book and there's also a novella called um, Mysteries of Thorn Manor where we follow these two characters after that story. So this is one of the fantasy books that I'm gonna read or two of the fantasy books I'm gonna read. And last but not least, as a little treat for the end of December where I actually have time off and can really sink into a book, it's this junk of a book called Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. This is the last book of the Thorn of Class, Throne of Class series. It is quite a thick book, but I absolutely adored the last couple of books of the series. So I'm really hoping this is a great finale to the series. And I do have to like sort of hurry up because I am then have to start the Crescent City series so that I can then enjoy the third book when it's actually coming out. So this is it. This is my huge um, but thin <laughs> um, book stack for this month. Please let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these books. What are your reading plans? Do you have the same problem with um, being sort of annoyed at when you take a really, really long time to finish a book? Um, and you also sort of transfer that annoyance onto the book, or am I the only one? Um, anyways, please let me know down in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye!